I am so excited to be guest hosting. Well, that's good. But um, before I even get started with the hosting part, I just wanted to tell y'all that, um, well, one, just thank you for listening. I mean, this has just been incredible. Sadie came with the idea to start a podcast. This has been like three years ago. And I checked before I came on here because I wanted to be able to tell y'all because I know Sadie will not like brag about this, but this podcast has had almost 15 million downloads which I think is pretty incredible. So thanks to y'all for just joining and listening. And as a mama, I'm so proud of my girl and what she's done and all the incredible advice that has been given on this podcast because, um, you know, it makes a difference. I know I talk to people all the time, all over the country that um, tell me what a difference this podcast has made in their life. And, um, you know, this takes a lot of work and Sadie works really hard to do something great for you guys. And I just want to thank y'all for listening and watching. All right. Well, welcome to Whoa, That's Good. This is so much fun. This is my first time to ever guest host. I've, of course, been a guest on Sadie's podcast, but she is still on maternity leave taking care of baby honey. And so um, she asked me to guest host, and I was so excited to get to ask Candace Cameron Bure to join us today. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for asking me. Well, so Candace and I have been friends for quite a while, and I also not only um, cherish your friendship, I also admire you from afar on Instagram and the way you just live your life so out loud for Jesus and sharing your faith as someone in the spotlight and a woman that is just super successful, but also super faithful. So I want to thank you for that. And thank you. And I feel the exact same way about you. Aw, thank you so much. Well, I thought we'd just start out by sharing like how we got to know each other. I don't even know if you remember exactly how we first met, but it was very significant to me because I needed you in that moment. <laughs> so um, it's when Sadie got asked to do Dancing with the Stars. We, um, the, the producer of Dancing with the Stars told me, you know, that who she had chosen for Sadie's partner was also your partner. Mm -hmm. And Sadie was 17 years old, barely turned 17. And I was like, you know, I feel like I need to talk to somebody that I trust that I'm like going to entrust my daughter to this person, you know, for like six weeks. Yeah. And um, they don't normally, you know, they, they, of course, Sadie did not know who her dance partner was going to be. They don't tell you who your dance partner was, but because I was the mom, she was like, okay, I'll give you a little insight. And he actually yeah. danced with Candace. So if you want to talk to Candace and she can kind of tell you a little bit about Mark, Mark Ballas was her partner and, you know, yeah. just about the experience and kind of put your mind at ease. So I called Candace out of the bloom was like, okay, as a mom, mom to mom, should I let Sadie do this? Yeah, <laughs> and that's right. <laughs> You were great. You were so nice. Thank you. I was um, I was so surprised when you had called me and I'm like, Corey Robertson wants to talk to me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Over what? This is so exciting. And um, and then you asked me all about Mark and how he was. And of course, I had glowing reviews of Mark because mm -hmm. it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. And Mark was so wonderful and protective and careful. I mean, he just knew the drill, but he, he also is a sensitive guy and like knew, yeah. just knew how to do it really well. So I was like, if she wants to do this, go for it because Mark is a great partner. Yes, that was so good. It really did put my mind at ease as a, from mom to mom. And your kids are the same age as our kids. And our kids have been friends for a long time. And so um, that was that was crucial, actually. I don't know that Sadie would have done Dance with the Stars had I not been able to talk to you and felt good about that. And Mark became just like such a you know big brother to Sadie and the whole experience was amazing so it was great yeah. Yeah. so um all right so now that we got that out of the way I want to ask you what everyone gets asked on this podcast what is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given oh my gosh I should have it's prepared a for this <laughs> I didn't prepare for this I didn't realize this is like a major major question what's the best piece of advice okay this is the first thing that just popped into my head and I feel like lots of people have heard this advice but my mom gave it to me and she's kind of said it my whole life but I actually remember a time during Dancing with the Stars that she gave me this advice again and she was like, honey, 
Would you feel comfortable if Jesus was standing right in front of you? Whatever choice you had to make, whatever act you're going to do, whatever you're about to say, would you if Jesus were standing right there? Wow. And it's really That's the great good. advice I've ever had because yeah. what is my moral compass? Yeah. And when, mm-hmm. when I know that my, maybe my mind, my heart, whichever it is, is like, ugh, if, if it's on the fine line, that is like the ultimate mm-hmm. maker to know whether I could stand before Jesus comfortably and be like, I said that, wow. I did that. So that's so right. good. That's so good. I love that so much. And it's so true because he is, he is with us all the time, everywhere we yeah. go. And, but sometimes we easily forget. Yes. I think that's great advice. And I, and I see that in how you've lived your life. And that was actually one of the things I wanted to talk to you about really, because you are one of the people that are, you know, in the spotlight celebrity, you, you're, you know, on Full House, Fuller House, all the Hallmark yep. movies, all the things you do. But in through all of it, you have lived it with your faith, like out loud. And I know there's there are other believers in Hollywood and there are people who are Christians mm-hmm. in Hollywood, but very few of them live um, as out loud as you do for Jesus. So tell me kind of like, why, why, why do you do that? Like why, what motivates you to keep doing that, keep speaking about your faith? I, I love Jesus. <laughs> I do. It just, I can't not, it's not yeah. a part of me that I can put aside for my work or when I go out with certain friends or other mm-hmm. friends, it's just, he, I, I truly believe is the most important person in my life. And it just comes from me. It exudes from yeah. me. and I can't put I can't put the pause button on it. Mm -hmm. So of course, like there's times when I use discernment of when to share my faith or when to talk more about him or less about him. Uh, And it is kind of tricky in the entertainment industry because as a person who wants to live her faith out loud, you know, I I understand and respect that not all people share that faith. And Mm -hmm. yet it's what's important to me. So I feel like there's a way in which we can we can share that isn't offensive to people if they don't believe because it's not it, it doesn't have to be for you if you don't want it to be but let me tell you I would love to share it but it's, yeah. for, it's your choice to make and if it's yes. something you don't want to think about or talk about or have a relationship with or watch some of my movies or shows because they have a faith element then by all means like just Pass, pass mm-hmm. along, like, you know, pass it along. <laughs> uh, and, and that's a, that's kind of it. Yeah. I, 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 I hope that the way that I do share my faith, I know it's authentic to me. And again, it's never about trying to shove it in someone's face. It's just like when you're getting married or you're having a baby or you just got a new job or bought a new house. Like when you have some exciting news to share, you just, like that's yeah. what you want to do is share it. And that's how I feel about Jesus. I love that. I see that in you. And Sadie actually said one time, I remember she was a little discouraged because she just kind of felt like people didn't really understand her. Or maybe she was like, why is she saying so much about this or whatever? And she was like, I'm just a normal girl. I just happen to really, really, really love Jesus. You know, and it's like, it's so true that that's it, you know, and it is like you said, it's something that I think as Christians, we can be a little scared about like, oh, how do we, you know, when and how and all that. But when it just comes out of like, okay, it's just who I am and it's what I'm excited about. And so it's natural to talk about Jesus when It, it, when it comes out of your life in that way. Yes, it does. And the more you do talk about Jesus or God or the, or the gratitude or the blessings that he's given you, it builds your confidence. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just little small steps. If you're scared to share those things with people, but the more you do, the more confident you will become in that. And I think that's where I am at my age now at 45. It's like, I, every year I learn what's more and more important to me, what I really put my value in and what legacy I want to leave. And that right there just gives me confidence. Age gives me confidence. I think it does, yeah. for all, but it really grows mm-hmm. my confidence in being, um, being able to confidently share my faith. 
Yeah, I think that's so great. I was I was thinking about with your mom's advice and with Dancing with the Stars and knowing that Sadie felt that way with, on Dancing with the Stars too. And like us kind of getting into entertainment in Hollywood and other Christians kind of been scared for us. Like, oh, you know, be careful. It's dangerous or whatever. You know, you know what happens to your kids or, or whatever, or you're doing reality TV. And, you know, for me, I felt the same way. It's just kind of like, you know, like, they can only film who we are and what we do, you know, and like yep. our faith informs all of it. It's not just one part of our life. It's not just, oh, okay, our faith is what happens when we're at church. It's like who we are within our marriage, who, who I am as a mom, who I am as a friend, who I yep. am as a business person, who I am when I come to work or whatever. And so I think that, um, you know, when we can, we can, our faith can encompass all of that it just comes out. It just comes out of us. And so people can't really like get around it. And um, I I think that's, that's a good thing, actually. That's a good thing. (laughs) All right, let's talk about socks. How annoying is it whenever your socks do not fit right? It's the worst. So I'm excited to tell you about features. One of the things that I love about features is they have a targeted compression that is exactly right there in your arch. It feels really nice. They fit nice and snug, but not too tight. Also, the other really cool thing is that they don't have a seam that's right there like on your toes, those seams that really annoy you. So they're so comfortable. They're great socks that can be worn when you walk or at the gym, or tennis. It's just kind of like a really great everyday sock for everything that you need. Also, the other incredible thing about features is that there is a lifetime guarantee. If you're unsatisfied at any point, they will give you a replacement pair, no questions asked. They are guaranteed to be the best socks you've ever worn. So Features is challenging you to try a pair, and if they are not the best socks you've ever worn, they'll take them back. They're so confident that you'll love their socks that they've given listeners of Whoa That's Good $10 off your first pair of Features when you go to Features.com slash Whoa. That is F-E-E-T-U-R-E-S dot com slash W-H-O-A for $10 off your first pair of Features. So I was thinking about that and, you know, in all the different things that you do too, you have a new clothing line on QVC, (laughs) which is so fun to see. And um, just all of your different ventures, I've noticed that you do even incorporate some of your faith into all of it, some of your different licensing. How do you kind of like decide, and I guess this is shifting a little bit to business advice here because I know... um, I know you have tons of things coming at you, I'm sure, tons of decisions to make about like, should I do this or should I do that? And I think a hard thing a lot of times is knowing like what to say yes to and what to say no to. How do you make those decisions? Yes, well, I've I've had a, a journal <laughs> that I've been writing in for years. And a lot of them are just big prayers, big dreams, things that I would love to do or accomplish in my life. And so I have sought those out over the years and and I keep praying about them. I mean, that's the start of all of the things that I've done is to know that these things didn't just happen haphazardly. They didn't all mm-hmm. just come about. I have been working towards the goal. I have been praying about them for many, many years. So something like a clothing line might seem like, wow, that's so great. And I'm so excited that it's come to fruition. But this is something I've been praying about for probably 15 years. It was like, wow. it's been on my list of things that mm-hmm. I would love to be able to do. And um, and with all of my my faith products with Dayspring, that the whole Candace Cameron Bure brand of devotionals and Bibles and and home decor that's faith filled. Again, it's like another outlet that I've I'm like, God, how can I share Jesus more with people? And I am an entrepreneur. I love I love business, but I love pretty things, you know. Mm-hmm. And so this was been on the list for a long time too, because every time well, there aren't even that many Christian bookstores around anymore. Uh, a lot of it you have to get online, but certainly in California, unless it's in a church, like there are just no Christian bookstores, which 
which mm-hmm. usually sold like home decor, whether it was pillows or candles or something that were faith inspired products, but I couldn't find them. And the things that I did find, I felt like they were so old fashioned or, you know, something that my grandma yeah. might love, but they don't mm-hmm. fit my style and they weren't yeah. contemporary. So again, it was the goal. I was like, I would love to have these kinds of products that would be aesthetically pleasing for my style and my home. And um, so a lot of these things I've sought out to get to the the bigger question um, mm-hmm. about how I choose who I partner with, even with skincare, I, I've the skincare that I use, which is Dr. Lancer, and I'm on QVC all the time with that, but I've been using it for 13 years. So I actually knocked on their door and I was like, how can I partner with you? Because I believe in this. I love it. You've changed my skin, which has changed a lot of my life because it has given me confidence. And so sometimes I've knocked on the door. Sometimes opportunities have come to me, but at the foundation of it all, it has to be authentic to me. It has Mm -hmm. to be real. It has to be truthful and honest. If I don't use it, if I don't love it, uh, there's no way I will sign my name on the dotted line, no matter how much money it is, because yeah. uh, I don't. And and I know yeah. you feel the same way too. Yeah. And you guys mm-hmm. miss the same way. It's like mm-hmm. there there isn't enough money for me to push something that isn't real that I don't believe in. And I wouldn't want my customer or the people that that follow me. There's a trust that we have. Yes, because I'm honest with them, and I don't ever want to break that trust. Yeah. I think that's so good and so important because there is so, yeah, I mean, I mean, you can look online at any moment and things are just being thrown at you constantly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when they can look at somebody like, okay, I know Candace, I trust that what she's saying is something that this is important to her and this is something that she uses in her real life. I think that's really important. One of the things you said at the very beginning of that, that I want to make sure like people do not miss is that. 15 years of prayer and writing in journal and thinking about and dreaming about so many people, you know, can look at somebody on Instagram or look at you, you know, or listen to you and think, oh, it just happened overnight. This like huge success just pops up. People are just like, you know, sending her things, you know, all of a sudden. And it is over time. And I know that I know this about your life that you did take some time off. Um, Mm -hmm. whenever you had babies and you didn't work, you didn't, um, pursue your acting during that time. And there's a quote that I remember that impacted me whenever I was a young mom. It was just that you can do everything you want in life, just not all at once. And I remember thinking that, okay, patience, like this is what I'm doing. This is what God has for me right now, but there's going to be time when I can do this or I can do that or I can do that. So I'd love for you to kind of speak to that, that decision to take time off then and, was it yeah. the right one for you? And, and how has that affected your life? Yes, I love that God gives us seasons in life. Mm-hmm. And I feel like just what you just what you said, so many of us feel like we have to do it all at once. And the truth is we we can do it all, just not at the same time. Yeah. It's okay to like put some of it down for a while. You can go back to it and pick it up at a different time in your life. And uh, that's how I felt when I had kids, you know, uh, Val, you know, my husband was a professional hockey player in the NHL for 12 years. And, uh, that was not the type of job that he could just, uh, put, put down or like yeah. take a break from. So once mm-hmm. you're a professional athlete, you have your window. And we had kids very young, uh, you know, two years after we got married and one of us wanted to be home and raise the kids. And that was not an option for my husband p- playing a professional sport. So I knew that I wanted to uh, stop working. And mind you, my life isn't typical in the sense that I started work at five years old. So yeah. here I am, a 22 year old now saying like, I'm going to stop working. Whereas most 22 year olds are just getting their life started. Yes. In place. But I'd already worked for more than 15 years and um, decided to take a break. But that was a big decision because I was at the height mm-hmm. of a very successful television show. But I knew it was the right decision for us because we didn't want someone else raising our child. And again, I, there's no right or wrong in that department. It's what is right for you and your family. But um, like babysitters were great when I wanted a night out or to go to a hockey game, but I didn't want full-time care. I wanted to be the full-time care for my child. Uh, But it was hard. You know, it was hard in that season to 
to surrender to it. It took me a few years just because I was so used to working, but Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful. Whether it's taking a walk around your neighborhood, running errands, or venturing out on your own, you always want to feel safe. With Birdie, you can keep doing what you love with the added peace of mind. So Birdie is a personal safety alarm that's easy to carry. It comes with um, a little keychain, so you just put it on your keychain. You can attach it to your keys or to your bag. You have it with you whenever, wherever you go. So you activate Birdie with just a quick pull. The alarm will emit a loud 130 decibel siren. You'll have a flashing strobe light to help deter the attack, and it will keep sounding the alarm for up to 40 minutes. Sometimes there's situations that you get in that you just don't feel safe. So it's nice to just have that something with you that you know that if you get in a dangerous situation, you can pull the alarm and it will alert people to what's going on and just keep you safe. So there's over 300,000 birdie alarms have been sold and they have thousands of five star reviews. So right now, She's Birdie is offering Whoa That's Good listeners 15% off your first purchase when you go to she'sbirdie.com slash whoa. So go to she's birdie, which is spelled S-H-E-S-B-I-R-D-I-E.com slash W-H-O-A for 15% off your first purchase. That's she'sbirdie.com slash whoa. God grew me so much in that season in my life. And it was 10 years that I stayed home and dedicated to just raising my children. But I always prayed and knew that if God wanted me back into the workforce, which I wanted to go back into the entertainment industry, that he would open that door. And at the same time, if he didn't open that door, I was confident that and trusted God that he knew what was best for me because certainly staying home and raising my kids was what was best for me. I could look at that in retrospect and say, thank you, Lord, for putting that on my heart. And um, because he did grow me so much, but you know what, as, as we, Val and I had decided that time after he retired from hockey, uh, we started praying about going for me to go back to work and, you know, God flung those doors wide open. I was actually shocked because I was so at peace that mm-hmm. going back into entertainment wasn't in the cards. I was so okay with it, but, um, that wasn't the case. <laughs> so <here laughs> Obviously I- not. <laughs> Yeah, and I just I went in full force and really have worked my butt off, and yeah. I love everything that I do. But it it almost gave me this this different one a different viewpoint of going back into the workplace because I genuinely saw it as a mission field mm-hmm. in, in my industry. But every industry is a mission field that you don't have to be in entertainment. Yeah. I mean every. Yes. Every um, outlet is a mission field for Christ. So I saw it from that point of view, but then it also gave me this almost renewed energy of like, I I felt like I had something to prove, but not in the sense that I just wanted to do it for myself. Like, wow, yeah. God gave me this opportunity and I want to work as yeah. hard as I can and honor him. And I'm just going to go for it. And I have. I love that. Yeah, you definitely have. <laughs> I looked up because I was like, how many Hallmark movies have you actually been in? And I looked up, says 26 Hallmark I think, movies. I think 26 Hallmark movies. That's yes, a probably. lot. That's... And I've done over, I know I've done over 30, maybe even over 35 that, you know, really? other movies. Other Hallmark. movies, yes. And then your Full House and Fuller House and all the things you do and your books and children's books, you have gone full force. And I love that. As you said, you were 45 and 47, I think. And I always forget my age. I'm terrible at that. But to be able to look back at your life and see like where God prepared you in those, in those times, you know, you're like, I remember being a young mom and thinking like, okay, is this it? What, like, what are you, what do you have for me? You know, what's my life going to look like? What's it going to, and loving that moment and that time period, but also being like, huh, like what's, what's it going to be? What was you going to have? And now at 47, I'm like, I got so much time. I can do it all of it. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I can yeah. do I, now I still feel young. I still feel like I've got so much time that, you know, wow. and, and I remember just in that, you just feel like, 
your life is like going to be done at 30 and it's not, it's definitely I not. <laughs> it's so true. I sometimes like when I'm in a room and now that I'm working, usually I'm the old person uh-huh. in the room, like our camera operators, uh, you know, sound, costume, yeah. Designers, yeah. make them hair all 20 years younger than me. <laughs> it's just, it's so cool. But I don't feel any older than them. Yeah. It's old number. I'm like, I am as young in spirit and That's energy right. as everyone it's, else. And you, you are as old as, as you make yourself as, as old as you feel, you that's know, right. it's only I know a number. Yes. My mom is in her seventies. My dad is in his seventies and they are young in spirit. Let me yes. Tell you. I, we have that in our family too. I'm so thankful. My grandmother turned 90 and she's amazing. She's actually making homemade ice cream for Sadie's birthday tonight, uh-huh. like right now. And Incredible. at 90 years old and taking care of everybody and still cooking and just, just, uh, and, and looks beautiful and fabulous. And so, yeah, yeah. it's just, an, I do remember cause I had babies young. I was just like you, we were married at eight. I was 18 when I got married. So I was young. How old were you when y'all get married? 20. Yes. And had babies young. And I remember I had two. I had, you know, John Luke and Sadie carrying them both around camp because John um, Willie ran the camp, was the camp manager at the camp at the time. And I remember some young college student calling me ma'am. And I was like 20 four, you know, and he was like, yes, ma'am. And I was like, um, I'm not that much older than you. I just have two kids. I just started early, you know? Right. But, yes. Well, okay. So since we were talking about kids and Sadie's home with baby honey right now, is you have any mom advice? Like, what would you say is your best mom advice? I know I'm throwing this one on you. Man, I'm sure from your family though, she is not going to get any better advice from anyone Aww. else. Yeah, oh, you guys are you. rock star parents and grandparents and great grandparents. Thank you. Um, so my advice, well, being a young mom, I, I, <laughs> I think I would tell her to try to enjoy the sound. So it's like your wedding day, like try to enjoy the moments. Yeah. But I think be, being a young mom, I was still very occupied with all the other things that the people my age were doing that didn't have kids. Mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. I look back on it and go, I wish I just spent more time like staring at yes. Natasha Lev or Max's feet or uh-huh. fingers. <laughs> like I'm still trying to yes. do things. And I'm like, there's so much time later to do mm-hmm. things. And it's awesome young parent. It really is. Cause I'm like, yes. I'm 45 and I have three grown adult children Yes, and my whole life ahead of me to do all these things. So, so like good. enjoy, enjoy, um, yeah, just yeah. enjoy like all the little, little tiny things because it's you'll so have good. It's so true. I tell Sadie that too all the time. Like just enjoy just the little, I mean, we, we always call babies like the biggest time wasters. Cause like they can, they can waste your whole day. You're like, you're like, wait, what did I do today? You know, I just basically stared at you and fed you and changed you and all that. But if there's nothing better, there's no better job than, and they, it just, it's like a blink and they're grown adults. Yeah. What about having adult kids? I'm loving this phase of life, having adult kids. I, I know you are too. Your kids are so much fun. And it's just, um, it's a fun, fun stage of life to be able to transition to being friends with your kids. Yeah, I love it. I've, I loved the teenage years so much because I love, I love conversation and yeah. I love different personalities. I love, mm-hmm. we, you know, it's like if it doesn't sound like there's an argument in our house, then it's like <laughs> not it's not a fun family night. Yes. <laughs> we are all very spirited, opinionated people. Um, and of course we're not arguing, but we are just like we go yeah. at it. So if you don't have much of a personality, you are not gonna have fun at our house at dinner because Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. I totally so I know the feeling. Yeah, it's great. So having young adult children, I just, I love seeing who God has made them Mm -hmm. uh, into, and I love seeing where they're going, but I love hearing all their thoughts and what they want to do and what their opinions are. And sometimes we agree and sometimes we don't agree. And those are the best conversations. Yes. I love that too. When you get to the point, which, I mean, I feel like you always learn from your kids, like even as when they're babies and 
children, like God is teaching you something through them. But as they can become adults, you're actually learning from them. Like, you know, we talk about what are you reading? What are you listening to? What, you know, what podcast, what, and there's this like exchange of learning and growth. It's just a beautiful thing that I'm, I'm really thankful for. I love that too. I will, I will tell you, I'll share this with you over, um, Val and I were having, uh, a, a difficult time, like at the start of last year when, when, uh, the pandemic had mm-hmm. hit and it was just a struggle for a little bit. We had to yeah. work some things out and <laughs> we kind of talked to the kids a little bit. And then Lev was like, can I, a couple days later, can I please talk to you too? And we're like, yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Lev, like. I'm getting my book. I'm getting a Bible out. Like Bible. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, literally preached a sermon for 45 minutes to our Perfect. Us. And he Perfect. was like, this is not what I'm saying. This is what God's mm. word says. And this and this and this. So I just would like you to think about that. And That's we were like, the best. Oh, it was awesome. That's I was like, so that good. You. I needed to hear yeah. that. But when you you know, your 21 year old son is speaking into you. Yeah. That way. it's like, wow, that is a, as a parent feels like such a gift. That's so good. I love that when you sow those seeds into them when they're young and you, you just reap that reward when they're grown and you're like, oh, yeah. okay. I taught you that in a moment when you did it, I need to teach you. And now you're coming back yeah. and teaching me and There is no greater reward than that. I love that. Actually, I was talking to a friend the other day and she was saying that she and her husband were having a little argument and her kids are young. And she said Mm -hmm. her son, who's like five, yelled, mom, dad, you need to get in there and cook together (laughs) because they were like arguing. They They were in the other room just arguing. And he just like yelled at him like, mom, dad, go cook. Like that'll that'll solve this problem. You know, sometimes we need our kids to set us straight. I love that so much. That's but that so is great. that's like good parenting advice, and you said it. It's like all those seeds that you're sowing. Yeah. Some days don't sound like they they hear it or mm-hmm. acknowledge it. It sounds like it goes in one ear and out the other, but it doesn't. It nope. doesn't. It yeah. always it always comes back, and it's it's never a waste of time. Never it's worth the effort, even in the hardest of days. So good, and just um just planning them in God's word, because like, that's, Mm -hmm. that's the truth that like, doesn't change. And so it's whenever I always feel like, you know, there's so much in the world right now that's changing. There's so many, you can be tossed and turned and always think about for our kids. I'm like, I hope, I just hope that we planted their roots really deep in God's word and that they know that they can always come back to that. And I love that he just got the Bible out and and read straight from it because that yeah. that's that never changes. That's so good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Before we end, I want to have to ask you this because your fitness. Every time I watch it, I'm like, all right. Every time you post something where you're working out, I'm like, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing it. You're killing me. I'm so impressed. So give us some tips. Like, how do you? I know with your life being so busy, because that's my excuse. My excuse is always like, okay, I'll just get in some kind of little workout routine. And then I have to travel or something else happens and then I get out of it. So how do you like your consistency? How do you do it? Give us some tips, fitness tips now. It's I mean, some days I have to motivate myself like I don't want to do it, but I just do it. But I I know how much better I feel. I think that's also been a lifelong battle for me because I, I have struggled with an eating disorder like a long time ago. But it's always been it's always been somewhat of a challenge. So once I finally found certain fitness um, sports or like Kira Stokes, the trainer Mm -hmm. and her app, once I found things in fitness that I really loved, then it, it helped me balance out what some of the struggles have been. And so I just, I love it. And then I know I feel so much better. Mm -hmm. And when I feel better, then I don't, have to struggle with the things that I struggle mentally yeah. with. So mm-hmm. I know that that's something that's, um, that is, uh, uh, pre, what am I, I'm blanking out on the word, but proactive. I am yeah. being proactive for my mental health to so do good. the physical work. So that's a yeah. big, big part of it. But, um, I also compete with myself. I'm a really competitive person. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, 
oh, I got to get my steps in. I have to beat yesterday's. Okay. Um, about it it's like once you get into it and I break all the time because like when I'm filming a movie I will Mm -hmm. pretty much not work out for three weeks because Uh I can't do the type of fitness that I do with the filming schedule but as soon as that's over man I pick right back up it takes me a couple days to get back but then by the by the fifth day, I feel good again, like myself, and I can do everything that I used to do. But I think the consistency of just knowing how much better I feel physically and that it helps me mentally is what keeps me going. That's good. I love that. Sadie is like you in the competitiveness. Like she can't wear her Apple watch because it makes her feel like she needs to beat herself from the day before, like the the little <laughs> apps that, you know, tell you what you did. Yeah. So she's like, I have to like put it aside sometimes because she'll be competitive yeah. with herself. Yeah. I don't have quite as much of that. I need a little bit more of that in me. I'm actually, I, I like to, I, I like to have a goal. So like if I have, you know, I signed up for a half marathon and like that got me because like then I had to train for it, you know? And so I trained, I loved it. I enjoyed it. I ran every day. I did the half marathon. I quit running. I'm like, all right, I got to sign up for something else, you know? But I think that's good. It's that finding what it is that motivates you, that makes you want to do it. And, um, and I actually love the way I feel when I do it consistently. It's just the consistency that, that gets me, but I love that. Just get back on. You say that, you don't do it sometimes yeah. during your I filming, but then you just catch right back up. All right. That's exactly. good. Yeah. It also really helps to have a buddy. And I, I feel like because my, my our house is a very physical house because uh-huh. Val is an athlete. Mm-hmm. I mean, he gets up and he runs an hour every day. Yeah. It doesn't matter what he's done the day before. It doesn't matter if he's on a plane. It doesn't matter, you know, if he had some wine. It's like he gets up and he runs. Yeah. So... And then all my kids work out too. So we're just an active family. That's so good. it's easy to be motivated that way. But all my whole point being have a buddy or yeah. have a couple of, have some mm-hmm. girlfriends that you can just like, let's go on a walk today. Let's yeah. do an act today, something that helps a lot. Perfect. Thank you so much. That's so good. I feel like we talked about, we ran the gamut pretty good motherhood, <laughs> entrepreneurship. <laughs> business, fitness, faith, all of that. So thank you so much. It was so much fun to catch up with you. I just love your family. Say hi to Val and all the kids for me. And just um, God bless you and all that you're doing. Keep thank going. you. God bless you and your whole family. And I will, yeah, I hope to see you all in person. Yes. Too. Yes. I hope so. All right. Thanks so much, Candace.